Hello and welcome back. This is L.A. Rathbone here. Time for part three of Slackware Series 2, which is where we learn to use and configure our Slackware system. Now, I meant to do about five things on the last occasion, but I really only did about two. So let's continue our um, adventures into the usage of Slackware. So the next thing I want to show you is how to use a text-based web browser called Lynx which is quite useful because it's often good to be able to look up the answer to a question that we have if we're stuck in the console and don't have a graphical interface. So for our purposes I'm going to be using the Lynx browser, L-I-N-K-S. Now uh, if you started up for the first time you may be greeted with a little dialog box, just press enter. But once you've gotten beyond that you have a little cursor up in the top left corner and that's really all that it looks like. Um, if you hit Alt F, you can pull up a menu. Let's just hit Escape. But we can see that to, to go to a URL, we press the G key. So let's escape out of that. Press the G key. And let's go to Google.com. And we have Google. And because we have the GPM daemon running, we can move our mouse around. We can click on the search uh, field. Type in, for example, Slackware. You can hit enter or click on Google search. And here we there you have it. You've got a Google search open. And you can search, you can click on the Slackware page, or you can hit page down, page up to scroll through. I'm going to click on the Wikipedia article. And here we go. We've got Slackware open up on the Wikipedia page. Now obviously there's no images because this is a text-based web browser, but it's a good way to be able to quickly uh, find an answer to a question that we have and you can sort of do some multitasking on the console as well so if you're open uh, if you if you've uh, got a website open here we're on our first terminal right now if you hit alt f2 or three four all through six seven will take you to a blank one because that's reserved for the x window system let's go back alt f1 alt f2 let's go back to our second console you can log in as pop rocks you got a prompt here. We can be editing a file while we also take a look at a website and figure out how to edit that file. And go to Alt F2, Alt F1, Alt F2. So you, you can multitask in the console. You can even open up a third one if you wanted to. But let's just uh, let's back out of even our second one. We only need one for now. So Alt F1 to go back to the first one. Let's hit Q. Yes, we really do want to exit links. Hit Y or enter there. So that is how you go ahead and uh, browse websites on, on, on uh, Linux or Slackware in a text-based system. Now the next thing I think that we should talk about a little bit is package management. Now Slackware has a very simple package management system and I love it. It's one of my favorite aspects of Slackware. It doesn't get in your way. It just does what it says it does and just lets you go and do your own thing, which is just the way I like it. Um, as recently as maybe a couple of versions ago, um, it now includes another utility called Slack Package. Um, but you'll notice that uh, all the tools are not accessible by our user. So if I type Slack pa Package, it doesn't work. Or if I type any of the other commands, it wouldn't work. But there's a series of commands and um, I'll just go through them real quick. I think the best way to do that is to, is, to, is to log back in as root. Remember we had an email welcoming us to Slackware, our second email. And um, these are the package tools that are available. There's install package. Whoops. And that obviously installs a package from scratch. And we're talking about binary packages here, not source code. Remove package removes packages. Upgrade package is a very useful command. It, it takes one package of one version and upgrades it with another, or downgrades it, whatever you want, as long as it's not the same package. Make package, we're not going to talk about that just yet, but that's how you create a package. We're rarely ever going to use that command directly in any event. Explode package, um, I barely ever use it. But it is nice to have. 
um, basically all Slackware packages are just tarballs. They're tar tar.gz or oh lzma I think the format is whatever other format is that they use to compress them. Um, txz or tgz is the extension, and they're just simple binary packages that just say here's where you put the files and here's a script that you run after it's installed. That's all it is um, in a package. There's no dependency checking. It doesn't say, oh, well, you need this package in order to install that package. Um, it just does what you tell it to do. Now, if you do, I'm going to quit MUT. If you do go ahead and install a package that requires another dependency, it won't, it won't tell you. It won't say, no, you can't do that. It'll just silently do it. And if you try to run um, a, a command that requires a library at that time, it, it will then tell you, oh, you need another library, or it'll give you an error at the time you run the program, which I like because I know how to resolve those issues. I don't need the package manager to tell me, oh, you can't do that, L.A. Rathbone. I know how to manage my system, so I like that. But Slackware does come with a number of tools to make your life a lot easier. And if we take a look at, actually let's run the less command on var log packages. Actually let's let's take a look at what's in that folder by doing ls on var log packages. Now all of our installed packages go in as a log plain text file. Okay. And now let's take a look at the contents of that, but let's pipe it using the pipe key. Shift and then the backspace key is usually what you do. And let's pipe it through the less command. So these are all of our packages that we have on our system. Okay, I'm just going to page up and page down here. So we have a lot of packages. And what happens is Slackware goes ahead and um, puts security updates for all major releases into a directory called patches on the FTP server. Um, and now each major release stays constant. It doesn't upgrade things for features. It just upgrades things if there's a, if there's a security uh, vulnerability. So that's the way I like it because I, I want my system to be stable and to work. I don't want the latest and greatest feature. If you want that, there's other distributions you can run or you can run Slackware Current. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to keep a stable system up to date. Now, the best way in my view, well, no, it's not the, that's not the way that I do it, but I think that the best modern way of doing it is to use the slack package command. It's very easy to set up, so let's go ahead and do that, and let's upgrade our system to the latest security updates. Let's run vi on etsy slack package mirrors, and let's uncomment a mirror of our choice I tend to uncomment the OSUOSL mirror. I think it's the Oregon State um, mirror. I'm in Canada, but I find that it's quite fast. So I'm going to hit 2x on the FTP server there to delete the comment line. And I'm going to go WQ. Now what we need to do is run Slack package update. And that goes ahead and syncs up um, the package list of all the available packages with the uh, open. Uh, OSU OSL mirror. Let's go ahead and do that. That'll just take a minute. So this is one way of keeping your system up to date. What I personally do is I just keep um, a directory on my system that has a, a copy of the patches folder uh, from the Slackware FTP server and I use what's called the rsync command and I just run it every once in a while um, to see if there's any new patches and then I use the upgrade package command manually to upgrade them but this is the way that most people do it I think in this day and age so I'm going to show you how to do it this way and the next command that you run is slack package upgrade-all and that'll up upgrade all the package to the latest security updates. Let's hit enter there. It's going to then check things and it's going to go ahead and say, ask us to confirm which ones we, that we want to upgrade. I'm just going to say all of them because this is a, a vanilla Slackware system at this time. 
we have nothing but pure security updates here. So I don't uh, have any problem with any of these updates. I'm going to hit enter here. And this is going to take a bit of time. There's not much to see here. So I'm going to put the video on pause and meet you back here when it's done. All right, we're back. So what they're asking us now, now that we've installed or upgraded rather all of our packages to the latest stable versions, they're asking us if we want to keep um, our old or old config configuration files and consider new ones later, overwrite all the old ones with the new ones, or remove all new files and keep the old ones or prompt for every single file. Uh, basically, a whole whack of configuration files are stored in the Etsy directory and um, because they don't want to overwrite all your changes, they define certain files as sort of editable files so that you can make changes and that it'll, it'll ask you what you want to do when you upgrade or, or, or what have you. So because we haven't made a single change to any of the defaults, um, it's perfectly safe at this juncture to overwrite all the old ones with the new ones. So, let, let, so let's uh, do the O key there, hit enter, and we're done. But I don't like having a bunch of stray .orig files all over my system, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at uh, what which ones are in there. So I'm gonna run the find command. I'm gonna run it on the Etsy directory. Dash i name. That means search for the name, but don't be case sensitive about it. Star .orig. Enter, and you see there's uh, about four new files there. I'm just gonna nuke those, and to do that take that same command that you, that you did there, but pipe it through xargs um, and then rm, and that'll just delete all the files. So xargs just says take, take all those lines that, that we had there and just run the following command on them. So let's do that. Now if we run the previous command, there's no longer any of those files. And if you look at, for example, etsy, kde, kdm, x, there's only the x session. There's no x session.orig anymore. So we are good to go in terms of our system. It's all up to date now. Um, so in the next episode, we will continue in using and configuring Slackware. Again, if you ever have any requests for anything you want me to show how to do, um, just uh, post a comment and let me know. I know that sound is probably going to be a big thing for people, but I've got sound disabled on my uh, on my virtual machine right now because record my desktop doesn't let me record my voice while I while I have a machine running that has sound on it so I, I don't know how to resolve that issue um, but uh, if any maybe I can SSH in my other machine and try it like that I'm not I don't know but uh, I think that might be an issue for some people but if you have any specific issues that you want me to cover let me know and I'll see what I can do for now this is Ellie Rathbone saying good night and good luck cheers